Hello everyone and welcome back to another pair video on the channel. In today's video we have an iPhone 12 that has a problem with the network, basically no service, no LTE 3G network, and sometimes the phone doesn't read the SIM card properly. Uh, this one is an interesting repair because I never had this issue before, in particularly in iPhone 12 uh, models. Uh, this is the European version, so this is uh, without the 5G network or it's not an American version. So now I'm just going to show you that there is a modern firmware. But when you go to the phone app and dial hashtag zero, uh, sorry, hashtag uh, star zero six hashtag or star hashtag zero six hashtag, it doesn't show the IME. So that is our problem over here. And you can see that there is no service even without the SIM card. Uh, so now I'm just going to show you the symptoms of the problem uh, so you can understand what I'm talking about. Uh, this is not a software problem or something. The client already did a network settings reset and full restore. Uh, and of course, the history of the phone is unknown. The client said everything was working before and suddenly just stopped showing uh, network bars, etc. etc. So you can see that uh, we just had a one bar network, but again, still we don't have uh, now, we don't have just no service. So uh, I guess after I will uh, after I finish uh, showing you the problem, uh, I will be jumping under the microscope to see if there is any repair history before on the board. Twelve models have a very bad soldering, so it could be a problem between both board connections. To be honest, I don't know what I'm going to exp uh, what is waiting for me or what to expect. So um, I guess yeah, let's go. So here's our board, it looks a little messy and definitely had a history pair. Uh, I noticed that when I first opened the phone, as you can see in the picture. And you can see that the board is uh, seems to be a little bent. And as I said, definitely separated. And you can see the spot soldering pads on the frame of the board, not cleaned well. Uh, but it doesn't matter if the phone works okay, it's just for clean work. Uh, so I guess it's better now to separate the boards and check maybe if we have a disconnection or something. So I'm going to skip the separating part and catch you guys after the separating of the board. So here we have our separated board and ready to get repaired. Hopefully, <laughs> I'm not shocked to be honest because a lot of parts are missing from the first time the phone got repaired. As you can see, the other shop or other repair service uh, scratched the root of the pad and soldered the boards back together without doing any kind of jumpers or renewing the pad. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm surprised to be honest. And how on earth <laughs> there was connection and the phone was working perfectly between both boards, I have absolutely no idea. But obviously, a lot of uh, missing pads are ground. But still, a lot of pads are important for the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and service functionality. So, I will be cleaning all the pads, and I will be checking which ones should I renew. So, catch you after we finish cleaning the board. So, we clean the board from the flux. This time, I'm not going to clean the pads immediately, because I'm going to make jumpers or put soldering pads on missing holes. I'll be explaining just a bit. And that's so we don't get a great pads or dirty pads on the clean ones course after the cleaning because we are going to use the hot air station to uh, solder our jumpers or our missing pads. I'm gonna find out. <laughs> uh, you can see I tried to count the missing pads at first, the one that needs to be renewed. There are more like 15 to 16 missing pads. So uh, yeah. And here I like to put a green mask on the ground pads. Uh, they are not necessary for board function, but obviously the ground is necessary for board function. Uh, just to avoid short ground when uh, soldering both boards together after we finish our work with the missing pads. And the next step I'm going over here, just uh, turn on my ultraviolet light to make sure that the mask uh, is dried out. And here is our result, and now we'll put a little solder on each root so the pad or jumper can be soldered properly. Uh, this time I will go a little different and use those um, <coughs> uh, copper pads or copper pads patch that I ordered from Aliexpress. A link will be in the description. Uh, to be honest, using these copper pads are much easy and faster to solder and they are very good quality, almost matching the real original pad. 
So I'm going to show you how I renew a couple of pads. I'm not going to show you all the pads or renewing all the pads because there are a lot. But the main thing is to get the idea. A little soldering paste, hot air gun, and the pad is soldered very nicely to the root. So after that I'm going to jump, uh, after I finish renewing the pads, I'm going to jump to the uh, final results. Finished renewing all the pads, I put a lot of musk on the board, so I'm going to clean up, scratch just a little bit. Uh, there's also those pads that had to be uh, renewed. Lines has to do with Wi-Fi antenna or something. Uh, let me just scratch this uh, mask over here. But we still have one uh, missing pad, which is over here. Uh, this line or this pad is uh, called GPIO underscore AP underscore from underscore wireline underscore time underscore sync. Uh, this line has a disconnection from the CPU. I'm going to explain more in just a bit. Uh, the root itself doesn't have connection or reading on the multimeter. I checked other board and it definitely had a reading on that line and ZXW confirms that. Uh, so what is this line or what, what is its job? Uh, I like to understand each word of the line or the part name. So let's explain each word. Uh, GPIO is obviously a signal, input output. Uh, the AP is the CPU or application processor. Uh, wireline stands for the Wi-Fi and time is for time and sync is for synchronize. Uh, so I'm just going to put it simple for understanding. Uh, the Wi-Fi chip and AP in iPhones are separate components that need uh, to work together uh, to establish a wireless connection. Uh, the Wi-Fi handles the wireless communication while the AP handles the software. Uh, this signal is used to ensure that both components are synchronized uh, to be, uh, to, be uh, to the same time uh, reference which is important for maintaining accurate communication between them. Let's just jump to this XW so I can show you the connection for this line. Here's the line and as you can see there is a uh, reading over here in ZXW and uh, GPU AP from one to synchronize and it goes to, uh, to the RF board which is jumps to the output of the uh, Wi-Fi chip. So, uh, as I explained, very simple, uh, it's, this line is basically uh, maintaining uh, or, uh, yes, maintaining accurate communication uh, between the uh, AP and the Wi-Fi chip. Uh, the main question is, does it affect uh, the Wi-Fi or the phone functionality? Uh, I don't think so, but you could have a problem with gaming or maybe a Wi-Fi disconnection from time to time, but I cannot confirm. I didn't have this kind of case before, or maybe I had and everything was working. Uh, either way, it needs test. And for the second question, am I going to reboot the CPU in this video in order to get the uh, um, <clears throat> this line, uh, to get a connection on the main board? Uh, unfortunately, no. I already explained uh, to the customer about the situation. He said he wants to repair this phone with less, uh, with less cost. So he's aware of the problem and he doesn't mind it. Uh, for my guess, the line was already disconnected from the CPU on the main board and he explained that he only had a problem with the network uh, no, uh, no Wi-Fi problem uh, which is probably our main problem here today with the network but we got a little focused on this line uh, so now I'm going to test both network and Wi-Fi functionality uh, on the board tester and if everything is okay I'm going to reboot the RF board and solder both boards together so here we are going to uh, test on the board tester. I connected everything: the charging flex, a sim, uh, the uh, uh, sim tray, or sorry, the sim card reader, and this is the Wi-Fi antenna. But unfortunately, it's only for the 2.4 gigahertz. So now I'm just going to speed forward until the device is uh, booted up, and you can see that we have our networks. The Wi-Fi is working. Now let's just try to connect to uh, our. Uh, our Wi-Fi station and still surging. This is only for the uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Do not show the 5 gigahertz, at least that I know. And yeah, it is because without the uh, the housing, the antenna is a little weak compared to the housing. But anyway, you can see we have a network. I'm going to uh, now test 
our network and see if we have we can dial yep everything looks okay the 3g is here lte is also here let's try again the wi-fi of course i'm going to uh, test more or test more accurately uh, after the, uh, i solder uh, both boards together because the housing has the most antenna for both wi-fi and network and you can see we have our network over here but it is very far <laughs> so i'm guessing very slow internet I'm not sure, we already have LTE, uh, I guess I'm going to <laughs> go and solder both uh, both boards and after that, yeah, I guess we have, we have a Wi-Fi working, but I guess we still have LTE, no? Maybe LTE, maybe Wi-Fi, yeah, I guess we have, still we have LTE, for a sec, it just got the Wi-Fi and now it just disconnected and got to the... Um, LTE, I disconnect the LTE and see if we still got on the Wi-Fi. Let's refresh. I guess I'm going to just uh, revolve the RF board and solder both boards together. And of course, test everything uh, well with the housing. Because as I said, the antenna is in the housing itself, so we can uh, test it accurately. So yeah, let's go. So now for the rebolling, I'm not going to show you the full process. You can check my other videos uh, about the rebolling process, the temperature and the paste. I'm just going to show you that I'm uh, rebolling the RF board and I'm going to skip all uh, the uh, soldering part, both boards and just catch you uh, to the final test. So here we are in the final test. Everything is connected, everything is soldered and of course connected to the original. Uh, have seen and now we'll be going to test both the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and of course uh, the network. Let's go to Wi-Fi first. To be honest I'm more uh, excited or want to test the Wi-Fi uh, more than the network. Uh, I'm now connected to the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi station. We have uh, two Wi-Fi stations, one 2.4 and the other one is 5 gigahertz. So what is the better Oh, goodness me, I guess it could be because of the range between the uh, Wi-Fi station and the phone. But yeah, it's connected again. Or maybe because the line is not connected uh, between the CPU and the Wi-Fi. But yeah, I guess this is uh, a problem with the range between the Wi-Fi station and the phone. Let me just go <laughs> near the Wi-Fi station to test with speed test. I guess it, it is the, be the best way. Uh, to check uh, the Wi-Fi connection and of course the maximum speed and you can see uh, 63.79 uh, megabits per second for the download the time is uh, also uh, put on automatically so everything looks okay now let's just go and test the network as I said I'm not sure if the Wi-Fi uh, will work perfectly but and yes, good sound, everything looks okay. So the network is fine. And as I said, I uh, explained everything to the customer. The customer is aware of the problem. So everything is, I guess, okay. Bluetooth is working. Again, the network, let's just go to the 3G, make sure that everything is okay. And yes, we have 3G. So I guess that's it for this video. I had a problem with the network, then I explained a little bit about the uh, GPU line or GPIO line, time synchronize. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If the video was helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for additional content in the future. As always, stay safe and have a good day. I'll catch you guys in another repair video. Peace out.